John, 50, remind me, 53? Nearly 53. Nearly 53. <laughs> Nearly 53. May the 5th. May the 5th this is year, your yeah. 53rd anniversary. Amazing. Yeah. Always wanted to be a bat maker. How did that come wow. about then? Well, well, there were three of us. We wanted to leave school and our mother said, you can't leave school unless you've got a job. We all had long hair down to our shoulders. So we thought, well, we better get a haircut first. So the nearest place was Robert's Ridge. So on our bikes, we traveled down to, to get a haircut. And I thought, I'll call in Ray Nichols on the way back. Anyway, we went into the hairdressers, first time in there. And he was an army barber. And we all ended up with short back and sides. Never look back. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, on the, on the way back, we called in Gray Nichols, and um, yeah, there was job vacancies, and uh, we both got jobs here and then. Brilliant. I, I went into the sawmill where I was supposed to go and uh, meet the charge end, so I found out where his office was, walked in the door, he said, what's your name? And I said, Gasson. He said, I mean, you Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought, what am I doing here? That's not a very good start. Brilliant. Is that, so that's how you welcomed Alex and Chris? <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. The traditional workshop. <laughs> really. yeah. See, we've got the three of you in here at the moment as makers. What, what was it like back in when you first started? Was it a, you know, a big operation? There's a lot of people around? Or was it still quite a small workforce? Uh, I think it was about 40 or 50. Was it? Told. Yeah. yeah in, in the mill, there was 10 of us. Um, handle makers, there was two handle makers and a, a cane splitter. Um, there was a lady in the back who used to do the vellum bats, stitch the vellums on and then soak them overnight. I was in the mill for two or three years and um, I went on to the bale lathe. Okay. First job after making the fires. Um, and then two days afterwards I was on the stump lathe. And this is where we had an accident. <laughs> 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 yeah, then, then Newbury was bringing around Ted Dexter and uh, of course, we had to check the, the length of stump before we put it in the lathe because if there was a knot in it, discard it. Okay. Of course, I was a bit nervous seeing Ted Dexter and the boss there, and I didn't look at this when I put it in, started it up, and I thought, oh, no. It was, <laughs> I could see this black mark there, and, there, and, there, and when, the, when the cutters hit it, it flew out and hit the roof. <laughs> a mess of dust everywhere, and they walked off. So you nearly, you nearly took out Grain Nichols' yeah, finest yeah. player and quite a stuff. Quarter of an hour later, I was on another job. <laughs> <laughs> when did, when did back making start for you then? About a year after I'd, okay. I'd, I'd been there. Yeah. And, and who, were the, who were the people at that stage were that were sort of showing you the ropes and giving you the sort of insight into yeah, what to do? Ted Jolly, he was, in, in, he was a supervisor of back making then. And uh, he taught me back making, sanding, um, repairs, uh, buffing and all, all jobs. So you probably would have ended up making bats with Ted Dexter, would you? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. You weren't giving, you no. weren't, the stump nearly killed him off, you no, weren't learning when you were in. Nearly killed him. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Who was the first major player you made a bat for? Uh, that was uh, David Gower. And were you That nervous? was one of the first um, scoops. Nervous? Yeah. <laughs> was it, did he yeah. come down? Did he come down or was he? No, he, he tried it the first one, but he did come down. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I made one or two more for him. What was your reaction when the scoop found its way into the uh, into the factory for the first time? For, for, first reaction was not for, only from me, but from Tony as well. And I spit up the bloody middle. <laughs> <laughs> and you've heard that before. <laughs> but, um, the, the driving area was there. It was, it was lovely. You probably would have made quite a few of those. But, Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I remember making the first one. Um, the first one was had a was painted mauve, right. painted mauve. It was, <laughs> nice. Then it got on, got on to the red. Well, I think there were some green ones one once upon a time. It was short one for a start, and then they lengthened it. Okay. And what there was one which was screwed sort of just below the splice, the halfway down the blade. Right. First one. But, um, they were thrown on a bonfire and I went and rescued them. <laughs> <laughs> and one, or, one or two players around the village are still playing with those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they really took off. Yeah. What about the, the tools look like they were probably 
the same as they. They haven't changed at all. The, the tools that you guys use are the same, same skills. Next, except there with the concave backs, you have to have a special plane for that, a half moon as I call it plane. Yeah. But the conventional bats was easy, really. Um, that's why you can make sort of 80 bats a day. Is that where you were, is that where you were sort of churning out back? Yeah, well, one day I made 120 on a Saturday working from seven in the morning till five at night. Really? And, uh, yeah. yeah and, we haven't got a chance doing 120 um, a day, no. Uh, that, they, was, they was called SSB1s, they was the best bats. Okay. So what's been your favourite bat you've Paraspot. seen? Parasmot. The what, sorry? Parasmot. My favourite bat for making, yeah, as well. Um, and why is that? It, it, well, it just feels comfortable. I know every everybody's got a different feeling, haven't they? You know, um, what suits them. But a power spot suited me. Yeah, it just picked up so beautifully, I thought. Yeah. And what, what I suppose, everyone's talking how much bats have changed. And obviously, you've got Chris and Alex that have come on board. And how, how, how different things are now. What, what are the things that are the same? What are the things that you were told makes a good bat? how to make a good bat, what are, what are those characteristics that haven't changed that you've, you've passed on to these guys and, and we're looking for now as we make players bats? Then, uh, most players wanted a white bat and straight blade. Yeah. But, uh, as you know, you can have a knot somewhere as out of the drive and it's just as a good bat. Yeah. But then, some players like wide grain and some like narrow grain. Yeah. And they didn't like any red. So, white, white bats this in today's day and age, Chris, Alex? Uh, it varies between players. players I think yeah. this, this, I think it's probably the same in John's days as much as ours, is the fact that every single player has a particular way they like their cricket bat. You get to know the player's specs, and just get to their specs all the time. Yeah. But then you get other players who don't, and like um, uh, Rob Key, he was, mm. he was one player, he, he didn't care. You know, <laughs> you pick his back, say, that's good enough for me, he said, and that was it. Yeah. Um, Chandra Paul, he's another Chandra one. Paul, isn't he? Yeah, he's he, has, a, he has particular things he, he likes, but he's fairly yeah. consistent. He has his exact thing every time. Oh, well, oh, I sure, he was another yeah. particular player. NASA was as well. Yeah. You no. Know? Not that it was a challenge, but who do you think was the most particular in your time? I would say uh, Mark Rance. Right. Yeah, and then Matt followed by NASA. Okay. When so, he took his bats away one day, and um, yep, yeah, perfect. And, Eight o'clock next morning, he's waiting at the back door to have an order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's familiar. Yeah. 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 Yeah.